Welcome to chapter two in our self-change project book, Self-Directed Behavior. This chapter is all about planning for success. It's kind of an overview of the entire self-change project, things to expect, things to avoid, uh, goal setting, just kind of broad ideas on how we're going to do the project. But it's important to note that as we kind of dive into this project, you should not actively be trying to change your bad behavior yet. We need to collect some baseline data on your bad behavior before you start trying to change it. Um, and then once we collect that baseline data, we can figure out what's triggering your bad behavior, maybe what some of the causes are, and then we can customize a plan to kind of address those root problems and come up with solutions to avoid the triggers and things like that. So we don't want to start changing yet. We're actually not going to start changing for quite a while, not until we get to chapter eight. So for this lecture, we're just going to kind of be talking about our plan um, in broad terms and what to expect with the project. So the first thing that you want to figure out is if you are trying to stop doing a behavior or if you're trying to start doing a behavior. And so either way, we're going to be able to use different techniques that I discuss with you in this chapter to um, brainstorm some potential ideas for when we do put together our plan for change. The ideas that we come up, today, uh, come up with today in this chapter might not be the ones that you actually do in your project, but we're just going to start kind of getting in the mindset of the project and thinking about these ideas of what is my goal, um, how can I achieve that goal, what are some ideas I could have, and then uh, we'll go from there. So maybe you'll use some of the ideas you come up with today, maybe you, you won't, but it's just about kind of creating a habit of mind of getting into the project, kind of sticking our toe in the water. So first up is, uh, do I want to start doing a behavior like I want to start running or I start, want to start playing the guitar um, or do you want to stop doing a behavior? I want to stop smoking. I want to stop procrastinating. So first you kind of have to just delineate um, between those two options and figure out if you're starting or stopping something. And then the next thing you need to do is change your mindset about your goal. So rather than just focusing on the goal itself, like I need to stop smoking or I need to start running, focus on what you can do to reach your goals. So we call those sub goals. Um, focus on little steps that you can take to move you closer to your goal. So the example I like to give is that at every down in football, players aren't thinking that they need to win the game. They're thinking just about the play that they're about to run, the position that they're supposed to go to, um, the behavior that they're supposed to do in that play, how many yards they're supposed to run, when they're supposed to turn and face the quarterback, all of those types of things. Um, and they are anticipating the other team's moves. They're thinking about getting a certain amount of yards, a first down, a touchdown, a punt, or a field goal. They're not thinking at every step, I need to win, I need to win, I need to win, and you shouldn't be thinking, I need to stop smoking, I need to stop smoking, or whatever it is. You should just be looking at one step at a time. So, uh, again, don't just focus on the goal, focus on sub-goals, and to kind of come up with some sub-goals, you can start to think about, what is my goal? What do I need to do to reach my goal? What do I need to do to practice reaching my goal? Or practice behaviors that will ultimately get me towards my goal. Uh, this chapter lecture can be a little bit confusing for students because if you look at the slide, you'll notice that there's those uh, two indicators for lecture activities. So we are going to have two lecture activities on this slide, but then you'll notice that the slide mentions three tactics. So those are two separate concepts. As we go through the lecture, the tactics are not going to line up with the lecture activities, so try to not get them confused. Um, the tactics are what you want to write in your notes, and the lecture activities are what you're going to turn in on Moodle. So you want to keep those things separate from one another. Um, so you definitely don't want to combine your notes that you're going to use to study for the exam with the lecture activities that you're going to turn in on Moodle. Um, okay, so. The first thing that we're going to talk about is this idea that when we look at our behavior, um, especially the one that we want to change, we need to consider it in context. We need to look at what situations do I do my bad behavior in. So the first thing that I want you to do today, the first lecture activity, is to give me a list of concrete examples of times that you've done your bad behavior. And I'd like you to think of as many recent examples as you possibly can. 
Um, I, I'm asking you to come up with five, so make a list of five concrete examples of times you've done your bad behavior. So, um, like, let's say that my bad behavior is online shopping. I could say, just last night, I was bored, it was late at night, I was tired, and I got an email that there was a sale at Old Navy, so I went online and I just kind of impulsively bought some things at Old Navy. Okay, so... Uh, you're going to give me five concrete examples of recent times that you've done your bad behavior for in-class activity one. Um, if you can't think of five examples of when you've done your bad behavior recently, you might want to reconsider if this bad behavior is actually something you need to work on because the behavior needs to be something that's happening enough that you can reflect on it, observe it, and write about it. And if it doesn't happen enough, then it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to do this project. So go ahead and pause the lecture video, do in class, or in, I'm sorry, do lecture activity number one, and go ahead and write down a list of five concrete examples of recent times you've done your bad behavior. The next uh, tactic from the lecture is to uh, try to look at your bad behavior in situation by listing the details of the problem. In other words, what leads to you doing your bad behavior? What keeps you doing your bad behavior? So we're also going to do a lecture activity with this tactic. So lecture activity two is to list the details of your problem. Um, one way to do that is to look back at one of the examples you gave me in lecture activity one and think about kind of all the things that led you to that problem. Or you could think about your problem more generally um, and take a broader approach to listing the details of your problem. So I'd like for you to give me five uh, details or a list of five things that keep you doing your bad behavior or prevent you from starting doing the good behavior that you'd like to start. Um, five details that keep you doing your bad behavior. So for example, if you have test anxiety, um, some of the problems that could lead to test anxiety or keep the test anxiety going could be that you don't have stable transportation to school. So you're already stressed out about how you're going to get to the test before you even uh, arrive there. You don't have enough time to study could be another problem. Maybe you work and have kids or uh, have a lot of extracurricular activities or sports you're involved in. Um, and so that creates a lot of stress because you're not prepared for the test. Um, so think about what are some things that are making your bad behavior difficult to stop doing or what are some things that are making it difficult for you to start doing the behavior you want to do. And these details could be thoughts, they could be feelings, they could be actions, they could be uh, obstacles in your life, they could be anything. So just brainstorm some ideas, there's no wrong answers, just give it a shot. Okay, so tactic three, we don't have a, a lecture activity for, so it's not something that we can do right now, um, but just as a way to start being more aware of your bad behavior and considering it more frequently, one thing that you can do is observe your behavior. Don't speculate about it. Start trying to notice when you're doing your bad behavior. Notice the thoughts that you're having. Notice the feelings that you're having. Notice the people you're around. Notice the situation you're in. And just get used to kind of uh, looking at your bad behavior as you're doing it. Or, you know, this idea of I want to start playing the guitar right now, but I'm not and figure out, you know, why you're not, or, or look around and see what's going on. Well, I got the Netflix on, and so that's preventing me, that's one of the reasons I'm not playing the guitar, or I'm really tired because I didn't sleep well last night, so that's preventing me from getting motivated to play the guitar, right? So just kind of look around and observe your behavior, and think about uh, when you're doing your bad behavior, what does the situation look like? I think I may have mentioned before, uh, but it's worth reiterating, that we're trying out a bunch of therapeutic techniques to become more self-aware and to figure out why we're doing our bad behavior and when we're doing our bad behavior. These techniques that we're learning are not going to work for everyone's project. Um, so some of them might not make sense to your project. Some of them might feel redundant. 
all that's okay. I just want you to be open-minded and go with it and kind of try all the techniques on or do them all. Even if they don't make perfect sense or it doesn't seem like it fits your project, just give it a shot. Um, sometimes people are surprised and they're like, oh, I didn't think that that technique made sense for my project, but it, I ended up working it out and it, it does make sense. Um, and sometimes certain things really don't make a lot of sense for your particular project, but that's okay. We're going to try it all. Um, and we're just going to see what is useful and what isn't, and then we'll implement the things that are useful into our project, but we're going to try them all. So one thing uh, that I want you to try is filling out this little a template here, or this fill in the blanks. So what I want you to do here is, again, kind of consider your behavior in situation, um, but this time let's talk about um, what you would like to be doing um, when you're not doing what you want to be doing. So for example, let's say that you um, are having a lot of anxiety or a lot of worry, then you might fill out this little template, my goal is blank instead of blank when blank, um, by saying my goal is, and then there you're going to put your good behavior. So if you want to start doing something, running or playing the guitar, you'd put it there. My goal is to start running, my goal is to play the guitar. Um, instead of your bad behavior, right, which is maybe, um, you know, I, I watch too much TV or I spend too much time on social media. So, again, if your goal is to start something, then my goal is to start blank. My goal is to start running instead of what you are doing, your bad behavior, instead of watching Netflix, when, and then give me a situational attribute here. So what in the situation keeps you from doing your good behavior? So my goal is to start running instead of watching Netflix when I'm tired. My goal is to start uh, running instead of talking on the phone to my friends when I um, am avoiding working out, right? So just try filling this out in different ways and see if you can't gain any insight. If your goal is to stop doing your bad behavior, then you want to put my goal is to, and then here you're going to put a behavior you could do instead of your bad behavior, so a good behavior, and then instead of that next blank spot is where your bad behavior goes, and then the when is a situational attribute. So, uh, for example, my goal is to drink a bunch of water instead of binge eat when I'm feeling sad, okay? Uh, like, for example, if, you're, if your goal was overeating, right? So my goal is to drink a bunch of water instead of binge eat when I'm sad. So what I'd like for you to do for in class act, or for lecture activity three is to fill out this template um, three times. So give me three examples. My goal is blank instead of blank when blank. So my goal is a good behavior instead of a bad behavior when I'm feeling this way or when the situation is like this or when I'm thinking these thoughts. Um, so get, fill that out with specific examples. So the next tactic here is that our strategy should always be to increase some desirable um, behavior. There will always be another bad behavior that will rush in to replace the bad behavior that you stop doing. So instead of leaving space for a bad behavior to replace a bad behavior, so for example, some people will stop smoking, but then they start overeating, right? So bad behaviors can often be replaced with another behavior that is bad also. So what you would want to do instead is replace your bad behavior with a positive behavior, with a good behavior. So as you increase desired behaviors, you're going to also decrease negative behaviors. So what I'd like for you to do for in-class activity four is write down five alternative behaviors that you want to increase. So if you want to stop procrastinating, then you could write down things like plan work ahead of time, create sub-goals, develop plans to meet sub-goals, assign priorities to my work, plan to cope with diversions, etc. If you want to start um, doing something, then you could write five things that would kind of guide you towards that good behavior or motivate you towards that good behavior. So if you're um, self-change project is to start running, you could do things like Watch motivational documentaries on running. Buy running clothes. Plan out my route for where I'm going to run. Get a running app that teaches me how to run incrementally. Um, talk to other runners. 
So write down things that you can do that are positive that will help you to reach your desirable behavior. And be creative. Brainstorm. Think about it. They don't all have to be perfect answers. You might not use them all. You might not use any of them, but just give it a shot. And then another thing that I want you to do is just write down on a separate piece of paper this template that you see on the slide here because later on you're going to need it. So I want you to write down a situation and then leave a couple spaces, what I did and then leave a couple spaces, and then what I should have done. We're going to use this template um, later on to do our first round of observations and kind of practice observing our bad behavior formally. But for right now, I'd just like you to have it accessible to you, and I'll give you more details on it later. So again, for lecture activity number four, I just want you to write down five positive behaviors that you want to increase, um, that you want to do instead of your bad behavior, or that you want to do that will help you to start doing your good behavior. Okay, so um, if it's difficult for you to think of sub-goals that will get you towards your goal, your ultimate goal, one of the things that you can do is tactic six. And this is the, uh, to specify the chain of events that will lead to your goal, but kind of the way to do that is to work backwards. So what I would like for you to do for lecture activity number five, and I know it's confusing because we're talking about tactic six, but we're doing lecture activity number five. So in your notes, tactic six, in your uh, lecture activities that you're going to turn in to me, um, number five. So in number five, what I want you to do is look back on what you wrote for lecture activity number one, where I asked you to give me a list of concrete examples of recent times when you've done your bad behavior. So I want you to look back at what you wrote for lecture activity one, and I want you to choose one of those examples that you gave. I want you to choose the example that you remember in the most detail, that you have the most information about, that you can remember the most about the situation and what happened before that, the one that is the clearest to your memory. And then once you have that, I want you to flip back to uh, where you're writing down or uh, recording your lecture activities. And I want you to tell me for that example that you just identified in lecture activity one, I want you to tell me the chain of events that happened prior to that example that you gave me. So if my example was that one about the Old Navy, um, uh, the Old Navy shopping online, then what I would do is I would talk to you or I would write down the chain of events that happened before that um, Old Navy shopping situation. Okay, so I would go back to, well, just before I bought the stuff online, I found an email that was advertising a sale. And before that, I was a little bored. And before that, I realized that it was like getting late and I was feeling kind of tired. And before that, I remember that I was hanging out with my friends and all their friends, all their kids had cute clothes on and I felt like my kid didn't have cute clothes on. And before that, I was cleaning out my daughter's closet and I felt like it was looking a little bare. So I'm just going to kind of keep working backwards to identify some of the things that maybe, I don't know for sure, but maybe those things could have led me to that moment where I found myself online clicking buy on my shopping cart at Old Navy. So to recap, for lecture activity five, you're going to look at and choose a example of your bad behavior that you wrote down in lecture activity one. Once you've chosen one of the examples of your bad behavior from lecture activity one, you're going to try to think about all the things that happened prior to you doing the bad behavior that could have led you to do that bad behavior. We call that a chain of events. And you're going to write those down. And how many you have um, really depends on the situation. I mean, I would say try to have three to five events in your chain that led you to do your bad behavior. Okay, so for your notes, uh, tactic seven is to observe people who are successful at what you're trying to do and then try their tactics yourself. Uh, we're not going to do a lecture activity for that, but it's something you could just try. Uh, so if you know someone that's uh, your, you know, let's say that your self change project is to stop overeating and you know someone that's really good at kind of controlling their food intake, then what you can do is observe them and see what they do. Do they split meals? Do they order small portions? Do they not go back for seconds? And instead of asking them like, hey, how do you control what you eat? 
um, just observe them because sometimes people lack self-awareness and they don't really know how they control what they eat. They just kind of do what they do. They do their natural habits and they don't pay much attention to it. So what you can do instead is just watch them. Pay attention to what people are doing that are um, doing the behavior you'd like to be doing. Okay, so for tactic eight, one of the things that you can do is just brainstorm solutions to your problem. Um, the things that you wrote down in lecture activity two, the details of your problem, or um, things that you've written in other lecture activities that are keeping you doing your bad behavior. Um, what are some alternative solutions to those problems? What can you do instead? And as you're brainstorming, you don't want to critique yourself. You just want to come up with a bunch of ideas of what you could do to kind of overcome obstacles or prevent certain triggers from occurring that are um, leading you to do your bad behavior. Um, and so to practice that right now, what I want you to do is look at what you wrote for lecture activity five, and then just next to each event, I want you to write kind of what you could have done instead. So one of the things that I wrote down in my chain of events for uh, lecture activity five was that I uh, checked my email and I saw that there was a sale at Old Navy and then I went on to Old Navy, right? So one of the things that I could do, a solution to that particular problem, is I could unsubscribe from Old Navy uh, emails. Um, another one was that I was bored. Um, and so instead of being bored and not having anything productive to do, I could have graded papers or graded homework or did something work-related or did a chore around the house. Um, to take away that boredom. So I want you to look back at each of the events that you wrote in your chain for in uh, for lecture activity five. And then I want you to write like what you could have done instead, a possible solution to that problem, um, a way to break the chain, so to speak, so that if I would have not received the emails because I didn't have a subscription to Old Navy, then maybe I wouldn't have gone online um, and end up, ended up buying the products. So for each chain of event you wrote down, write down what you could have done instead, what you could have done differently, um, and maybe then you know you wouldn't have ended up doing the bad behavior. So just give it a shot, brainstorm, no wrong answers, just try it. Okay, so for those of you that feel like your goal in this project is not to stop doing something, but to start doing something. So maybe you feel like your goal isn't really to change a bad behavior, you just want to start painting or you want to start taking flute lessons, um, then what you need to do is understand that even if your goal is not to change a specific behavior, reaching the goal will require changing because you're going to have to change the behaviors that are preventing you or keeping you from doing the good behavior you've been wanting to do. So in order to start doing the good behavior, you're going to have to start subtracting certain behaviors, adding certain behaviors, changing certain behaviors. Um, so, you know, if you wake up at 9 a.m. and then you go to school, you go to work, you do your homework, you take a shower, you go to bed, and then you do the same thing the next day, you're going to have to change that routine if you want to add running into it, right? Maybe instead of waking up at 9, you have to wake up at 7. Um, so even if you think your ultimate goal isn't to stop doing something or to change something, change is still going to be a part of your process. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Okay, and so when we do get on, um, to chapter 8 and we start actually trying to change way down the road, so we have quite a while to go, but once we get there, I want you to understand that this process is going to include small successes as you meet those sub-goals and also mistakes. And so it's really how you deal with those mistakes that will determine your success in general with this project. Um, and when you are stressed, you need to really be careful because when you are stressed is the times that it will be easiest for you to rely on your old habits, give up, throw in the towel, or a towel not keep going, things like that. So what you need to do is instead of using a mistake as an excuse to stop the project, um, because it's not, mistakes are going to happen, you're going to make them. Uh, if you're trying to stop smoking cigarettes, there's going to be a day where you smoke a cigarette. Um, and instead of using that as an excuse, like, oh, well, now I smoked whole things over, can't do the project anymore. Uh, what I want you to do is take a skills development attitude. Don't beat yourself up over failures. Instead, if you make a mistake, 
in a way, it's kind of a great thing because we can really learn from them. Like, why did I give in to this? Why did I lose self-control? What happened, right? And then we can figure out what caused the bad behavior to come back, and then we can um, do things to make adjustments so that those triggers don't occur in the future. So when you make a mistake, just think of it as a sign that you need to practice your good behavior more. Think of it as an opportunity um, to learn and not a reflection of your personality. So in psychology, we call this having an observing ego. So I'd like for you to try this actually over the next couple days just in your life. You don't have to write anything down about it. But it's an interesting thing to do and it's, it's actually really good for mental health. So instead of like judging every behavior you do, um, I want you to just kind of watch your behavior, especially as it relates to this project. Um, so if you're working on like, for example, anger control, you know, next time you're feeling especially angry, rather than kind of judging yourself and being like, see, here I go again, I can't control my anger, I want you to practice having an observing ego, which is looking at your behavior objectively like a scientist and just going, hmm, look at me feeling angry. Look at me yelling at someone and just note what you're doing, but don't try to analyze why you're doing it and don't try to make a judgment on it. I just want you to practice going, okay, look at me yelling at this person. Look at me throwing pennies at a car on the 10 freeway. <laughs> look at me uh, eating a bunch of junk food. Look at me doing these things, but not with any judgment whatsoever. And it's it feels really weird, but it's an interesting practice to just look at yourself objectively uh, without assigning a judgment or overanalyzing in the moment. We'll do that later, but for now, let's just see how our behavior looks. One of the things that we're going to have to do in this project is prepare for temptations. Um, we're going to be tempted to do our bad behavior, and we have to have a plan for how to deal with those situations. Um, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that we're not allowed to use the phrase, just this once, just one more time, um, things of that nature. So if you're thinking, okay, I'm going to stop doing my bad behavior, but just this one time I'm going to go ahead and do it, that's not okay. We can't use that phrase. We can't use that excuse. We can't use that out. So we can't say just one time because it never really is just one time, right? We, we say that over and over again. Okay, so other ways that we're going to prepare for temptations is we're going to avoid situations that we know will be tempting. Sometimes students tell me, like, I want to stop drinking, so my plan is to just go to the bar and just watch everyone else drink and not give in and test my self-control. That's a horrible idea. It might work once, but it's not going to work in the long term, and you're not going to be learning anything about your bad behavior doing that. So in the beginning of this project, um, well, uh, when we start changing, I should say, so in the beginning of the changing process down the road, we're going to avoid situations that we know will be tempting. Once we get really good at um, controlling our bad behavior, then we can start introducing those tempting situations back in. But initially, we're not going to go to the bar if we're trying to stop drinking. We're not going to put our situation our, ourselves in situations where we're going to be tempted to do our bad behavior. So the second thing that we're going to do to prepare for temptations is to ask our friends not to tempt us. Uh, people are weird, and when we tell them about this project, sometimes they like think it's fun to mess with us and try to tempt us to do our bad behavior. Um, they can put pressure on us to keep up our old habits or undermine the project altogether. So uh, just let them know, like, no, I really have to do this for school. You can blame me. My professor's crazy and she's like super strict and I have to not do my bad behavior or I'll get in trouble or I don't know, make up something. Um, but ask your friends not to tempt you when later when we get to chapter eight and we start trying to change. Another thing that we're going to do is um, make a public commitment that we're going to change. And so the way we do that is by we uh, telling people about this project by saying, hey, I'm working on this. I have to do it for this class. I'm really committed to it. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to do is if we find ourselves in a min in a tempting situation, we want to minimize the tempting quality of that situation. So one of my favorite examples is from your book about this guy that had recently gotten married, um, but he was a big flirt, so he had to stop flirting. And so what he would do is if he saw an attractive lady, 
uh, he would try to find something about her that was unattractive. And he was particularly turned off by, like, what he called knobby, knobby knees, which I assume is just, like, bony knees or skinny knees. I don't really know. But anyways, uh, so whenever he would see an attractive um, girl, he would just chant in his mind over and over again, knobby knees, knobby knees, knobby knees. And he would picture her knees if he couldn't, if she wasn't wearing shorts or a skirt or something, then he would picture her knees and picture them as being knobby. Um, or if he could see her knees, he would picture them as being knobby anyways. So try to minimize the tempting quality of the situation, however you can do that. Um, in the, I think I showed you guys the marshmallow test experiment, and in that experiment, the little kids that didn't eat the marshmallow said that when they looked at it, they thought things like, oh, this marshmallow uh, is white and puffy like the Michelin Man from the commercial. But they didn't think things of like, oh, this marshmallow looks so delicious and sweet and yummy. So minimize the tempting quality of the situation. And then number five is when you are in a tempting situation, you want to distract yourself. Um, so think about other things, change yourself, talk, get up and walk away, do something else. Um, and then number six, when you are tempted, remind yourself of your goal. So the best way to do this is to have self-reminder statements, just kind of as a mantra in your back pocket that you've had memorized that you're able to just kind of recite over and over again if you're feeling particularly tempted to do your bad behavior. So for lecture activity six, I'd like you to write down what we call self-reminder statements. I'd like for you to write down five of them. And these are just reminders as to why you are why you want to stop doing your bad behavior or why you want to start doing your good behavior. Um, so for example, if my self-change project was to lose weight, then uh, some of my self-reminder statements could be, I'm going to look great when I lose this weight. I want to eat this now, but later I will feel guilty. Um, I want to lose weight so that I can be healthier and live longer for my kids or whatever. Okay, so basically self-reminder statements are reasons that you want to change. So give me five of those. Five self-reminder statements uh, for lecture activity six. And then the way that you would use those when we uh, create your project is, or, or your, your plan for change, is that you would um, say them to yourself whenever you felt tempted to do your bad behavior. But for today, just go ahead and write down five self-reminder statements for lecture activity six. Okay, so seven is to ask other people to remind you uh, to not do your bad behavior or to do your good behavior, especially when you're tempted. And then uh, the eighth uh, suggestion for preparing for temptations is to prepare if-then plans. So if I'm tempted, then I will do this instead. So for lecture activity seven, I'd like for you to write down five if-then plans. Um, if I eat and I still feel hungry, then I will drink water and wait 30 minutes before I eat again. Or if I feel bored and I want to go look online, I will fold a basket of laundry instead. Um, so give me five if-then plans for lecture, or yeah, for lecture activity seven. If you feel tempted, then I can do this instead. Um, so that you kind of have those ready to go to in the event you feel tempted. So give me five if-then plans. If I feel tempted to do my bad behavior, so insert your bad behavior there, uh, then I will, and then come up with something that you can do instead of your bad behavior. Okay, so self-efficacy is a term that you're going to need to know for the exam. And self-efficacy is your own estimation of your skill in handling some task. So self-efficacy is not a general belief about yourself, but it's task-related. It's task-specific. So uh, not can I stick to my diet, but can I resist eating while watching TV? Um, and so it's not just a simple yes or no answer always, but a yes, maybe, no type of continuum. So what I want you to do for lecture activity eight is I want you to look at the uh, self-efficacy belief questionnaire. I believe it's on page 48. Um, it's in chapter two of your self-directed behavior book. It depends on the edition you have. It's page 47 in the 10th edition. And there's three questions that you're going to have to answer. And you just have to answer them with one word, yes, no, or maybe. 
Um, and you're going to use the answers to those questions as part of your commitment contract. So um, for your step two assignment for your self-change project that is on Moodle, um, you are going to need to um, write a commitment contract, which is where you basically commit to do this project. And so you can use the answers to those questions from Lecture Activity 8 as part of your commitment contract. But for now, just go ahead and add it to your existing list of Lecture Activities. So Lecture Activity 8, look on page 48 or whichever page the self-efficacy beliefs are in your book. It's page 47 on the 10th edition. And then uh, write down your answers to those three questions. And your options are yes, no, or maybe. And keep in mind that what we believe about our ability affects how hard we try. And how hard we try is going to determine our success on this project. So when you believe in yourself, you'll try harder. You'll use better problem-solving skills. You're less likely to get distracted. You're more likely to persist longer and overcome obstacles. And you're less likely to give up when you make a mistake or fail. But when you don't believe in yourself or in your ability, uh, you'll either avoid it, become emotional when dealing with it, or make up excuses in advance for why you're going to fail the project. So it's not necessarily about believing you can achieve the goal. It's, a, it's about believing in your ability to do the work required to reach your goal of this self-change project. Okay, so that's it for uh, this chapter lecture. Head on over to Moodle to complete the assignment associated with this chapter, which is step two. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.